This is Every Creature Commission Television. We welcome you to the Saturday Night Rally in the name of Jesus, the Church of Scotland special. Lindsay, we're here tonight, our fourth attempt, yes. literally. We are telling you so determined. The, the devil's throwing everything to stop this program going out. But he is not succeeding because each time is going to be better and better. Hallelujah. Now we're here in the name above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Lindsay, I was in a waiting room uh, for diabetic eye screening. And dare, would you believe? In the waiting room magazine rack was an article about John Knox of the Church wow. of Scotland. And splinters, it said, used to come out of his pulpit because he used to thump the pulpit so hard. Now, what would he say if he found out the Vatican were running the Church of Scotland he today? He absolutely mad. That's what he spent <laughs> his whole life defending and protecting. We are here to bring the Church of Scotland back in line with its founder John Knox how dare you in 121 George Street Edinburgh bow down to the Jesuit to the Vatican in their phony translations Lindsay you are a Greek scholar yes of St Andrews University no, St Andrews University is very 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 significant in the history of the, the Kirk the exactly you know that and here we are with a copy of the Nestle Alan text, which is used in practically every church of Scotland we know. We only years ago knew of a church of Scotland in Inverness, which ran from the Antioch line. What was the name of that church? Is that the East Church? The East Church. And what was the name of the minister? Reverend Angus Ian MacDonald. And he preached the true word of God. I think, Lindsay, that's the only time we've ever heard over the last 30 years the true word of God preached in the so. Church of Scotland. Well, it's going to come to an end. Because if you do not remove this garbage from your churches, then you will come to an end. So either way, it is in its last days of the apostasy, or as God desires, as our hearts desire, we're able to restore the Church of Scotland back to its days of John Knox, where it was that radical force in the political and constitutional realm, demanding freedom from Rome in the nation, which you, Church of Scotland, have bowed down to. I've got primary evidence. And that primary evidence is before me. This is the introduction I'm about to read, or part of it, from the Nestle Alan text to prove to you that if you are in a Church of Scotland, a member of the Kirk, you have gone against your own constitution and bowed down to papal order. I will prove it. And it's certainly the case here in Whithorn, Scotland. The text shared by these two editions, it's an introduction to the two editions of the Nestle Alan text, was adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. So your Bible, like in the case here, understand here in Witton, and we're going to present to you tonight manifesto for the Kirk here on the Maccas Peninsula, Scotland, which I believe God will use around the world in relation to your own local church. Mm. And our heart is that you make a stand in your community as we're making a stand in ours. This marks a significant step with regard to interconfessional relationships 
it should naturally be understood that this text is a working text in the sense of the century-long Nestle tradition, which came out of Westcott and Hort, active pagan spiritualists who denied the creation, who were Darwinian, who, in their false scriptures, bringing together the codices of Vaticanus, Alexandrinus, and Sinaticus, produced Bibles which deny the deity of Christ, calling him mm. a son of the gods, deny him as God manifest in the flesh, deny the resurrection as it relates to believers, take out the blood, take out hell, and it is this we object to in our own Church of Scotland congregation here in Whithorn, Scotland, but oh, the day we're the only ones, it is widespread across Scotland that this apostasy has come in, and it is time to return to the real word of God, which is why God has given us a manifesto straight from the heart of God. Mm -hmm. It says then, it is not to be considered as definite. If you've got a non-definite Bible, you're going to get slaughtered by the devil. Now, mm -hmm. we have been on the major attack over this program. Sure have. But we are determined to see it through. Last week, we were coming to this crucial point, and you sense the devil going mad at what we are. Well, listen, listen. The devil got mad at John Knox, but he stood in an article I read in a waiting room this week. Splinters were coming out of its pulpit, mm -hmm. and as he thumped, the pulpit hallelujah praise the lord and what happened then well people had to shelter because they didn't want to get splinters in them well i'm telling you now in the mighty name of jesus of nazareth we are coming against you devil for stealing the church of scotland from the calling of john knox we are calling you down in the mighty name of jesus of nazareth and we are declaring we are believing that this whole apostasy as we pull down the modernists which have infiltrated the church of scotland can you see it here as regards to the bible not infallible now, that is common in the Church of Scotland oh, because yes. they're teaching their ministers the doctrine that inerrancy is wrong and that some is written by the writer and some is prophetic, but some isn't. All of this stuff we're having to suffer in the Church of Scotland, in other denominations as well. And the warning of General Booth is clear. And he was relating this to the beginning of the 20th century. The chief danger that confronts the coming century will be religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, politics without God, and heaven without hell. How he was so right. He also declared, I'm not waiting for a move of God. I am a move of God. Right. And this puts onus on ministry throughout the Church of Scotland to fulfill the Great Commission call, to declare the Lordship of Jesus, to move by the power of God. And look at this. Comparison. Jesus here in Daniel 3.25 related in the King James Version as the Son of God, but in the NIV and all your other Nestle Alain translations, he is only a mere a son of the gods. Well, we are calling an end to this garbage. I'm declaring it as John Knox would declare it. He would be going crazy at what you have done to his cuck. Being there at the behold of these Jesuit Bibles, at the behold of Freemasonry, suppressing the true gospel. And it is you who have been tacking the remnant to pull us down, to destroy us, as warned in the scripture. 
This is what Jesus said from John 16. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. Well, this is what's happening here locally. Church folk are getting offended by what we, that's the first thing you fall down to. Realize we have the primary evidence. We have the Greek scholar here. We have the proof you are preaching Gnosticism here on the Maccas and not Christianity. If you were teaching Christianity, we'd hear the blood of Christ preached every week. If you were preaching Christianity, we would be warned against the papal infiltrations into our society. If you were preaching Christianity, you would be preaching the cross, and men, women, and children would be coming to the front, bowing the knee to Jesus Christ. But what we have is a dead church a million miles away from what we witness under the ministry of the first church of scotland minister john knox they shall put you out of the synagogues yea the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth god's service that we were we, look we've done this kind of work before mm. and i'm telling you it comes at you in 2010, we were threatened to be destroyed through official channels. Court case after court case. Government inspection on the government. Trying to catch you out legally on this, that, and the other. I tell you, it doesn't work. We're still here determined as ever. And Jesus continued, And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. Mm -hmm. The NIV, one of the Church of Scotland Bibles, declares... It's Jesus to have the same title as it's Lucifer, the morning star. We have all the primary evidence. Lindsay, we are going to go through this. Mm -hmm. Work the manifesto for the Kirk on the Maccas Peninsula. Now, we are relating this locally because the Spirit has led us that way. But we can guarantee all over the world this can be the case of your establishment church in your area. So we're here to bless you. Our audience is all over the world. No, nope, we've not got any sound interference. We're beating the devil. <laughs> I'll tell you this. This program has had so much interference. Uh, Lindsay just had to run being sick last week. I tell you this, Lindsay, your time has come. Your time has come to expose what has happened to the Kirk your dad so mm -hmm. lovingly belonged to. Mm -hmm. You want me to tell them? What's yeah, please. To okay. Well, first of all, in about my dad, even, you know, so many years ago in the 1960s and 70s, he warned the Kirk session at Blair Athol and Stu and Kirk. He said, which is it to be, the Kirk or the Lodge? Or in other ways, you could say it's like Elijah saying, uh, how long halt ye between two opinions? If it's to be God, choose God. If it's yes. Baal, choose Baal. Because actually that is what this is about. Because if you look at one of the key names that's given in the Masonic Order, it's Jabulon, which is a mixture of Jehovah, Baal, and Osiris. Oh, it's coming that out, is a Lindsay. mixture, it's, it's a out. mixed multitude. I remember going in our early years of our marriage up in Inverness. I remember going to a ladies' prayer weekend with the Lydia Fellowship. You will have mm. heard of them, I'm sure. Go for it, a Lindsay. Strong Go group for of it. lady intercessors. Yes. And the speaker was a minister's wife from Orkney. Yes. And it was clear in those days and that was in the late 1980s a long yep. time ago god yep. knows what we're it's like back now. to take this that on 48 percent of yes. the leadership that's ministers yes. and elders yes. in the church of scotland yes. known as the kirk openly admitted to being freemasons 48 percent what about all the yep. ones who didn't admit yep. it so they're serving two masters yes and how can the trumpet give a certain sound nope. as they say the trumpet gives an yep. uncertain absolutely sound, and there is no voice of god now in that kirk or only a tiny 
tiny small voice at the most. And this is what's happened to the Kirk. Absolutely. He's been infiltrated. And now we yes. have a scenario in Scotland. I yeah. hardly recognize this no. country. When I came back yeah. in, uh, early in 2018, after being away for uh, 26 years nearly, yeah, and I just—that's a generation, yes. folks. And I just couldn't believe what I saw. No, and you know the same scenario is here as was in 1560 or just yeah. before then, when a certain Mary Queen of Scots, yeah. a very, 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 uh -huh. very uh, almost fanatical Roman Catholic, arrived back on these shores uh -huh. of Scotland from France, and she was determined to keep that yeah. to stifle the Reformation, but she couldn't because. The Reformation had burst out yep. like a dawn. They call it the dawn of the new, yep. of, the, of the sun coming up, the light, the morning uh -huh. light of the Reformation in the true sense. It had begun, and nothing could stifle that Reformation. Mm. And John Knox. The prophet of God, a mighty man of God, yeah. a 16th century Ian Paisley, if you like. Yeah. He came back from being a galley slave. They tried to destroy him, you know. Yeah. That Cardinal Beaton, that evil Cardinal that worked with Mary, Queen of Scots, supposedly a celibate priest who had loads of mistresses. He ended up hanging out dead yeah. out of the window of the castle of St. Andrews. Because if you, what you sow, when you sow death, mm -hmm. and he sowed death, because the city of St. Andrews, when I was a, a student, was full of uh, martyrs. There were martyrs' yeah, graves along the street Lindsay. there. And he tried that evil cardinal, that lackey of Mary, Queen of Scots, Cardinal Beaton. He mm. tried to destroy that reformation. He, even what happened to John We're Knox, he ended up as a galley slave yeah. on the Roman Catholic yeah. French yeah. galleys. Yeah. But he came back. Yeah. This is Ian Paisley, by the way, was put in prison by his yes. own kind, the Presbyterian yes. Church of Ireland. Yeah. And that Captain Terence O'Neill was the ringleader of this. They put him in prison. And just like the Apostle Paul, he wrote letters from prison. And just like the Apostle Paul, the great prophet John yep. Knox, wrote speeches and sermons. Yes. And went and tirelessly poured out like a drink offering. Yes. Gave his life for the reformation, for the purity of the church. Yes. And he built not only the church, but also the whole political system and government of Scotland yes. became a Protestant nation. church of Scotland and nation. And you, Church of Scotland, have placed yourself under the Vatican. Again. Again. And there's and another we, Queen of Scots now. And we have been called to be the John Knox to take on this. Mm. Because the word of God is infallible. Not this word. This is the phony word. Mm. Tyndale gave his life for the Antioch line, the King James Bible. I will remind you, Church of Scotland, that the very first coronation of King James took place in one of your churches. Yes. The Church of the Holy Rood in Stirling. Now, Lindsay, will you write down for me on the bottom of here, mm. in future programs, Saturday Night Rallies, we're going to show some intercessions we have done around the country in relation to what we're talking about. We're going to show the intercession at the Church of the Holy Rood Sterling, where King James VI of Scotland, later be, to become King James I of England, who authorized the true Bible. He um, it was so important in this understanding of the Church of Scotland. We're going to be showing you, too, the intercession at the Bible Society in Edinburgh and in their headquarters at Swindon. Going to show the intercession too in Dundee in relation to a Presbyterian holiness preacher. And we're also going to show the intercessions at the Grand Lodge of Scotland on George Street and also on George Street, Edinburgh at the Church of Scotland headquarters. So Lindsay's taken that. A little note here that you have two this is showing American Freemasonry, but the principle remains the same. We are grateful to our friend Ed Decker 
<coughs> of Washington State America for his work on Freemasonry. And we're dealing here with the York Rite, the Knights of Templar, mm -hmm. the Knights of Malta, what's known as the so-called Christian yeah. Rites. <coughs> and within that comes Roman Catholicism. Within this comes the spiritualism of Westcott and Hort, the background to scriptures which deny the deity mm -hmm. of Christ and the, and, and the Holy Trinity of one God. I and my Father are one, declared Jesus. And he sent his Spirit to dwell in true believers. But we went here locally to the, to the, to the Church of Scotland. I don't think we heard the gospel. We heard it once mm -hmm. through a visiting minister. Yes. But outside of that, I'm struggling to think that I heard the blood preach. Mm. Warning uh -huh. against hell, warning against these new translations which deny the deity of Christ. All this was missing locally. And also the preaching about the end times and, as well. And also lies we're told, we're declaring. And one lie is there's a shortage of ministers, which yeah, is yeah. the first exposure in our manifesto for the Kirk on the Maccas Peninsula. Yeah. Let's pray, Lindsay. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. As we come into what you've given us to speak out on this program. And that now there's been four attempts to get this program out. We know there is so much attack. You cover this with your wings, Lord. Cover this program. But we know and know and know that we are to be as John Knox. Because your word declares, Father, to remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. And so we are here mm. to be a blessing to the Kirk, mm. to expose Amen. what it has let in, and to bring the glory of God. And our heart is to have a booming Kirk on the Maccas Peninsula as we pray throughout the world there be booming mm. national churches upholding the constitutions, that is, Christian constitutions of nations, wherever they may be. And we know that the last revival mm. in Britain came through Presbyterians mm. in the Hebridean revival. And it's our heart here in Witton to see revival here. Yeah, we are believing but, on that. As J. Edwin Orr, the famous revivalist, pointed out, before you can build a garden of the Lord, you must not undermine the importance of removing the weeds. I want to mention something about that, please, David. A, a few minutes ago, uh, David was explaining to you about the two rights, the Freemasonry rights. Now, there are certain words that I want you to understand this. It's far too much compromise. There are some times when you've got to separate the chaff from the wheat, when you've got to weed the garden, Go as David it, says. And I'm telling you now, right, in the 25th degree of Freemasonry, the other word they learned, we've already, already mentioned this mixed up God, Jabulon, including Baal. In the 25th degree, the initiates of that learn another word, which is Abaddon. Or Apollyon, an absolute devil. Now, Apollyon is the Greek word for it. Abaddon is the Hebrew word. Uh, Apollyon means the destroyer, okay? Mm. The devil, that's who they learn. Now, let's be clear on this. A very, very famous work was written by a Puritan, wonderful Puritan preacher who also went to prison for what he believed, <laughs> called John Bunyan. And yeah. he wrote a work called Pilgrim's Progress. And Pilgrim was on his way on the journey to the mm. heavenly city, the, the New yeah. Jerusalem. And he was wearing the armor of God and it talks about all his journeys yeah. and who he met. Mm. And the biggest fight of his life was against Abaddon, or Apollyon, yeah. as yeah. it's called, the Greek mm. name. You cannot have concord mm. between Christ, Christ and, and Baal. Baal. Now, in the strength of the Lord, he overcame this thing. Mm. But you must understand this, that this church has got to be set free from Freemasonry. There's got to come a separation, as my dad said all those years ago. He did. Who are you to choose? The Who's it to or be? The lodge. 
Right. Yeah. Exactly. Now, our manifesto begins with remove part one. And you can send for this and you can find it at ecctv.org. Remove the inaccuracy that there is a minister shortage. Mm. Well, to begin with, the Bible knows nothing of a one-man minister church, but rather of a church of kings and priests being perfected by apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's why you always have prophets and apostles. We know in our local church there are those who have their background in the apostolic church which came out of mm. Penagroyce, a marvelous church. Its doctrinal basis, I would say, was perfect. They knew what they were talking about in relation to sound doctrine. And this is so important that there be role for apostles and prophets being the foundations of the church. John Knox was a prophet. And the average church of Scotland goer today wouldn't have liked him no. because he was challenging and had a cutting edge and would not tolerate those of the flesh. This is a heartfelt thing. Mm. That we are here on the Macca starting a week Tomorrow, we are starting Bible study, revival prayer meetings, as well as our morning service. Mm. We're doing it online from a week tomorrow, here in October 2019. And we're going to practice these things, but our heart is that the CAC takes this up. We would love to hand it over to the CAC. Mm. But the CAC needs to come back to the Protestant Bible and renounce Codices, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus, and Alexandrinus. Are you going to do it? We are proven by primary evidence. I'm quoting Revelation 5, 9 to 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, as made us, that is, the church, unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And the heart of God, as in Chronicles, the word of the Lord came from the heart of the congregation. That the whole congregation be involved and not be the pew fodder of the minister. Mm. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists from Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. And that is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So rather than being sinners saved by grace, we read in the scriptures that the what's commonly known as the fivefold ministry, as we call the ascension ministries, are there for the perfecting of the saints, rather than the popular mantra of the Church of Scotland of being a sinner saved by grace mm. without the preaching of the blood. Would you be whiter? Much whiter than snow. There's power, power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now, Lindsay, in our local kirk, how often was the blood preached? I never heard it preached. You never heard it preached? No. So what we're saying today is that the blood of Christ is not being preached in the kirk. Mm. 
If the blood of Christ is not being preached, how many calls to the front to come to the cross and lay your whole life down? Mm, Did you none. hear recently in the Kirk? No. We were there for seven months, which I think is giving it a fair trial. To be our, you know, with a chance, you know. And we, we were actually there to help, not to criticize, but to help. That it might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. How often did we hear the word sanctification? No, don't remember it. The washing of water by the word? Mind you, what does concern me, and this is a general thing throughout the world at the moment, especially the Western world, mm -hmm. the huge rise in vegetarianism and vegan mm -hmm. beliefs. Because where you've got vegetarianism and vegans, you know, you're going back to the and time of an Cain and Abel. You are. Cain gave an offering of corn from the ground, right? Yeah. Abel gave an offering of the shed blood yeah. of a lamb. Yeah. And you see... Where there's no blood shed, there's no remission for sin. And how often in the kirk, when we were here for seven months, Lindsay, did we hear, nay, and all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved no, us. No, I don't remember hearing that. How often did you hear sinners saved by grace? A lot. There's a fair old bit of worm theology in there. Psalm 51, 7. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. And that was in the Old Testament. How often did we hear that in the kirk? Mm -hmm. And also our position in Christ Jesus, which proves we are all the ministers, that is, those washed by the blood of the Lamb. If children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we shall be glorified together. How often did we hear preached that those washed by the blood of the Lamb were equal with Jesus, joint heir with Christ? No, How man, often? Never. Then, about backsliding. Turn, O oh backsliding children, was the declaration of Jeremiah, the weeping mm. prophet. For I am married unto you, quoting the Lord, and I will take you, one of a city, two of a family, bring you to Zion. That is walking the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How often was that preached in the oh, kirk? No. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Mm -hmm. How can a sinner saved by grace be one spirit with Jesus? Because that would make him a sinner too. Such is the heresy. Indeed, Leonard Ravenhill said this. Oh, I'm just a saved sinner. That's like saying you're a married bachelor. That's like saying you're an honest thief or a pure harlot. You can't be a saved sinner. You're either saved or you are a sinner. Mm. Now, how often did you hear that in the kirk? What saved sinner a lot. Well, it's going to change. We're here. We were called here. They say, oh, well, they, we were running away from Wales because we were in court cases. Yeah, we, court, we had the establishment church come after us, the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and well, we've never denied that we've always we, been very we, open, open about this. Can be. We're here to tell you we're here to bring God's glory. But to bring God's glory, we've got to take out on sound doctrine which the founders of the Church of Scotland would never have tolerated. What declares the word? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, talking to the church. This was Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians. Mm. Your body is the temple of the Holy. You call in your body a sinner saved by grace. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This is heresy, which is in you, which ye have a God, and ye are not or your own. You're bought with a price. You can't put God on top of your life. God becomes your life. Mm. And then the final verse of this section, I am the vine, ye are the branches. How could sinners be joined to the vine? He that abideth in me, and I in him, how can Christ abide in sin? You see, the proof of it is Jesus' words on the cross, is it not, David? Yeah. Because he said, why else would he have quoted, I think it's Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he is carrying at that point the sins of the world. Yeah. And God, his Father, 
cannot look on sin. Right. And our final point of our program tonight. Oh, this is just part one of the manifesto. Oh, the royal priesthood of believers. Mm. You know, Lindsay and I used to love watching I Am Jolly on television. Oh, we did. We still do. And we still do. God bless. Well, he is, I believe in heaven now, Ricky Fulton. Mm. I mean, he, he was just a wonderful, wonderful comedian, brought great joy to the people. I believe he had made a commitment to the Lord. So I've heard. I haven't got primary evidence, but so I've heard. And, and he brought a great joy to the people of Scotland, particularly on the last day of the year, or the Gregorian year, but we won't go into that. <laughs> that's another, there are lots that's of another, years, that's actually. another uh, abomination of the, of the Vatican, the, the actual calendar, but, uh, but that's probably too much to take on. This is enough. We are the royal priests of the believers, the ministers of God. Mm. There's not one minister in Witton. I know of many ministers. Those washed by the blood of the Lamb. But those who are washed by the blood of the Lamb bring conviction to those who aren't. Mm. And my heart here in Witton, as it is our heart, that you in your locality say in the Spirit to your local Kirk, that God has provided his manifesto. And that is the preach on this first point. We'll be coming to the second point on marriage and true love waits next week. But on this first point, on this special Saturday night rally program, that we are the ministers of God. Ministers in the plural, as Paul mm. wrote his epistles to the elders, plural, and the whole culture of the Church of Scotland is to have elders and a moderator. Mm -hmm. And it is this heart of the covenanters why the Bible College of Wales has been brought here by the Spirit of God, to remove the textual criticism. Look, I was taught it too at a so-called Pentecostal college, Elam Bible College. You offered me a degree from Manchester University. I refuse. You need to refuse these textual criticism degrees mm. because they question God's Word rather than embrace and believe it as definite. So we are here tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, to thank you for joining us in this amazing program, which we've had so many battles to get out. And we know and know and know that God is calling his saints to join us here in Whithorn so that as one of our callings, we restore the national church. It's our heart. It's our passion. But to be able to do that, we've got to dig up the weeds, which we have started to do in our program tonight. Lindsay. And remember, folks, that this is a town motto of Whithorn. But I believe it's a promise of the Lord for this church as well, Kirk. And it's called Resurgam, which is Latin for... I will rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please join us and contact us. The details are on your screen now. ECCTV4219 at gmail.com. We thank you for joining us for the Saturday Night Rally. Perfecting the saints to overcome the attacks of the deep states. One of them being to take over our precious national church in Scotland as he has done the same at Canterbury. It's time for the true church to rise up and restore that which God has ordained to the nations. God bless you. Goodbye. Goodbye.